So hey everyone, I'm back with another amazing thriving story and today we have here with us Ms. Pilar Davila from Austin, Texas. And Pilar has an amazing thriving story to share. So when uh, in the early days Pilar was diagnosed with stage 3 ovarian cancer but then after a few years her cancer relapsed and it progressed to stage 4 where it spread to the entire body. But then Pillar chose to heal herself naturally by changing her diet and changing her lifestyle. And today she is here with us to share her fantastic story. So Namaste Ms. Pillar, how are you? Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for having me. I love sharing this so there's more awareness of how to heal your body. No matter what is going on, the body can heal. You just have to have patience and discipline. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. So let's let's hear your story. I mean, how did it start and how did it happen? In 2010, I already was feeling really sick. I had pain in my pelvic area, uh, bloating. I gained weight and then I had more and more pain on the left side. Went to the gynecologist and they said, oh, you're OK. They're just cysts probably benign but then I was doing a photo shoot and I fell it was like a creep and I fell and I I hurt my left side and I it was I was in so much pain I go back to the doctor I said this is not normal I don't feel good she said let's do an ultrasound and they found two tumors on the left of my ovary about 11 and 8 centimeters on the left and she said you're okay you're too young 39 for it to be anything serious. We're gonna be okay. And my intuition said, it's, it's bad, it's cancer. I knew it, I knew it, it was something very wrong. And she said, let's wait. Let's wait, a, a, you know, a few months, see how it goes. I said, no, I want you to go in and take him out. But in the United States, insurance plays a very important part in yeah. how doctors, yeah. you know, see you and that treat you. I didn't have very good insurance. And then mm. I'm like, okay, that's why. So finally I paid out of pocket. It was a gynecologist, my gynecologist. She mm. went in to see, and she says this big sticky tumors that were black, they look awful. And she took them out. She took out the tumors, one ovary, and mm. that was that. After that, I felt really good. I started losing weight. I started feeling good. And to my opinion, that's where I had to stop. Remove the mm. tumors with surgery and stop. So mm. she said, you need to see an oncologist and do a full hysterectomy. I saw three oncologists. I mm. think everybody should get three opinions to make sure you're doing the right thing because there's a lot of room for mistakes when it comes to treating mm. cancer. Mm. So uh, I went to very good places, very good oncologists. They all said the same, full hysterectomy, but uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say, but a very famous uh, hospital, cancer hospital in Texas, they said, well, for prevention, let's take him out, but there's no evidence of cancer. Mm. There was no, it was gone, but it can spread. To me, mm. if you keep cutting organs and removing mm. organs and doing biopsies. To me, that's how it spreads. That's just my opinion. So I did a full hysterectomy. I felt horrible because mm. it is very serious not to have your reproductive yeah. organs, right? Exactly, exactly. So then fear of cancer, full hysterectomy, a lot of problems with marriage, uh, financial problem because cancer is mm. an expensive disease. Yeah. Two little girls, little daughters. I mean, mm. just everything was wrong. Work, having to work full time. Everything was going, so it made it more stressful and stressful. And I didn't change my lifestyle then in 2010. I didn't. Mm. I continued stress, mm. drinking. I used to smoke, eating very unhealthy. I did a few good things, just a few, but more mm. bad things than good. 2014, it came back. It came back in my colon, pelvis, and liver. 
and in the liver there were two big tumors, uh, almost seven centimeters and almost four centimeters. And once again, the oncologist said, well, there's nothing we can do. It's terminal stage four. But then I saw so many different doctors, the oncologist, the yeah. gastro, the gastro-oncologist. Mm. No hope, no hope, no hope. Call MD Anderson and, 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 well, there's nothing we can do for that type of cancer, ovarian stromal sarcoma. And they wanted to give me a medicine that's an estrogen blocker with chemo, Femara. Yeah. I didn't want to take that. Mm. And I said, I'm going to find another way. Mm. So um, I started traveling to different clinics, Mexico and the United States to find mm. answers. And you, you want me to tell you what I did? You want me to tell you? Yeah. So I, I actually, I wanted you to complete. So I have a lot of questions here in between. I mean, so you're Earlier, your tumor was localized, right? Uh, in 2010, when you were first diagnosed. Say what? Say it again. Uh, your t your tumor was localized that time, right? It did not spread. No. In 2010. All right. All right. So they removed it uh, via surgery, and it was all gone for the next few years, right? Yeah, by 2014. But it, they were already so big that I'm sure sure uh. they were there before. Maybe 2012. Oh. All right. But Got when it. they Got did it. a colonoscopy in 2012, there was nothing there. So they grew, I guess, in a year, 2013, 2014, fast. And I was uh, uh, very stressful life. You mm, have, oh, mm. awful. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, and how old were you back then when this happened? Uh, you know that between that, 2010, that I was 39, and now I'm uh, like, how old was I? Forget how old, but 44, I guess. You know, uh, I'm like, it, how old? I was it. so worried. I'm like, how old was I? But 2014, uh, so yeah. 39 yeah. when yeah. I was first diagnosed, 43. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were saying about, you know, you went to Mexico and you found some alternate uh, doctors. So not doctors, yeah. people that do herbs. Oh, diet right. and PMF, uh, light PMF, okay. herbs mm. and diet. Mm. Mm. So who recommended you? I mean, how did you know about all these things? Were you aware of any natural therapies in 2010 and after, you know, th this process was going on and specifically after in 2014? So in 2010, a lot of my mm. beautiful, wonderful friends called me, sent me emails, texts about different things, but believe it or not, my dad's a doctor and I did not believe that those herbs were going to heal me. I thought my oncologist knows everything. Doctors know mm. everything. They, I'm mm. in good hands. So through one of my friends, he told me about this place in Zacatecas, Mexico, where they do, he says he heals cancer okay. and he's done research for 48 years. So I went there. Mm. I went and I got all the herbs. I followed the diet, no animal protein, only mm. maybe eggs, but no mm. animal protein, a lot of fruits, vegetables, mm. alkaline diet. Mm. That's what he recommended and manage my stress. That's what he mm. recommended. Just through people, right. everybody was sending me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this was during this period, 2010 and 14, right? Yes, so in 2011, I went to this place so I kept mm. trying things, but I didn't stick to them. I, I didn't, mm. it's a lifestyle. I thought I'm going to take yeah. this in, a, in two months and everybody does mm. that. But no, you have to change everything. Mm. 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 All right. So, uh, and you know, during this period, I mean, what was your doctor's opinion about this? I mean, you must, they must have told you about going through chemotherapy or surgery, uh, radiation therapy to get rid of it, right? Well, the crazy thing is that they mm. said that for that type of cancer, chemo wouldn't work. They gave me an oral medication that I did not want to take. And now mm. there's scientific, scientific proof that chemo mm. doesn't work for a lot of cancers and it mm. causes secondary cancers. Mm. And yeah. one of them is ovarian cancer. All right. So yeah, they, they didn't 
they said, no, we're okay. We're well, going to take this medicine. There's nothing else we can do. There's no hope. There's no studies. There's no trial drugs. There's nothing we can do. And this is three oncologists. All right. All right. So you went ahead with surgery and uh, I mean, in 2010, everything became clear after that. Uh, after that, you went to, uh, you know, your, your friends and your family members, your everyone, uh, you know, around you started recommending you to go towards uh, different herbs and natural healing. Right. Natural. And then yeah. uh, you followed it, you know, uh, you know, half uh, you followed it. Sometimes you did not follow it the other times and then. Uh, afterwards, in 2014, it relapsed. So it was after four years, it relapsed. Yeah. Yes. I hope and I'm wrong over here, right? I, you're right. I, I hope I'm right. In 2014, in May, I started feeling tired. I had to work a lot and drive and travel for work. And I had two little daughters. No, I didn't have help. I live in a city with my family. It's not there in Austin. And very 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 stressful and i remember i was in pain and i couldn't have bowel mm. movements i started bleeding through my rectum mm. bleeding and bleeding clots and mm. that's why i got scared and may 26th i i had the most horrible pain i've ever had in my life in my liver because the tumors were mm. big it was a saturday and sunday Monday, I go to the emergency room and they find the cancer everywhere. And that doctor in the emergency room said, if you hurry up with your treatment, right away they're thinking chemo, right? You might make it. I go to a gastro, I go to this, that, all these oncologists, and they're all like, it's everywhere. Mm. Even if we cut mm. part of your colon, mm. you're not. it's gonna spread. This one oncologist told me, it's all going right. to spread. So why in 2010 they decide to remove my reproductive system? So they mm. contradict each other, you know? Mm. Mm. So that's when I said, I am going to find a clinic. I call six different clinics and the price in the United States is from 30,000 to yeah. 80,000 and you have to pay mm. everything right. all at once. There's no, oh, mm. make, let me make payments. So I said, I can't do that. So I went to a Centers of New Medicine in Irvine, California. They have a lot of different treatments from around the world. Mm. And that's when I discovered discover PMF therapy. I have a machine right here. And mm. she said, you have had chronic stress for too many years. And I'm like, yes, yes. And mm. she said, let's figure something out. So diet, supplements, PMF therapy, uh, and uh, coffee enemas or colonics, like cleaning mm. the colon and detoxing. Yeah. So, so I just put everything together and I, I made a protocol that I have on my website that is wow. everything that I do now. I still do it. Till this day, I do the same thing. From and 2014 how did you to came, now. How did you came to know about, uh, you know, all these things about coffee enemas? You, you were doing your own research or uh, how, I mean, you came... Uh, to know from some place. No, I love research. I ah. love research. And I have a friend that said, you're obsessed all ah. day. All I did was on my on my iPad, research and research and calling. I call this guy, Robert Wright from Killing Cancer Not People. I email him. I talk to him on the phone. He does cancer research. Mm -hmm. He called me. Um, I met Kelly Turner for Radical Kelly Remission and, and many different mm -hmm. people. And mm. I, I said, why can I, I was so blessed that I got to talk to them, especially mm. Robert Wright that does cancer research. And he said, mm. do this, this, this. And I just kept, I had a board with everything that I was doing, organized what supplements to take, experimented on my body. But right, I said, right. if yeah. I treat my body right, my body's mm. gonna treat me right. Right. That was, that's my right. saying. <laughs> no, that's fantastic. You know, one of the things that, you know, I really like about this, you know, your story is you did not give up. I mean, uh, was it discouraging for you at that time and specifically when, you know, you, you went, you came, you got the news that you got a relapse 
and it has now spread to your entire body were you i mean you obviously must be scared but were you afraid that you know or did you give up at that point of time that i can't do anything now and you know this is it and i just can't do it so was there any at any point of time did you feel it because it takes yes, a lot of courage yes. to go towards the natural path i was in so much pain and i called my ex husband and he said oh, i can't take you so i had to drive myself to the hospital that monday at 7 in the oh. morning i didn't have any ibuprofen i don't have it. i don't take medication for pain so i just drove oh. in so much pain and oh. when they gave me the news i called them and he didn't want to come pick me up and i said oh. you have to come pick me up he goes and they tell him that i had terminal cancer you feel so confused so sad so but mm. i don't like giving up i mm. go and i try until you know i I'm a, i have two beautiful daughters and they were little three and a half and seven i'm mm. not gonna give up and i will get really 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 sad very sad mm. and also when mm. you have colon cancer it affects your brain too you know it's connected mm. and i was very sad and i planned my funeral <laughs> i sent it to several people i said this is what i want but then i said i got to keep on trying i got i would look at my at my beautiful girls and my little girls they need me so mm. i kept trying and trying and trying until mm. i started feeling better and with a lot of discipline a lot of discipline mm. focus i quit my job mm. and i got help from my family and I just kept on going. One day at a time. That's, One day at a time. That's that's fantastic. That's really fantastic. And uh I mean uh, this was all in 2014. So how when did you start your natural protocol? I mean after how long after getting diagnosed, re- again getting re-diagnosed? After how long uh did you start your natural healing journey? This is what I tell you, buddy. act immediately immediately mm. but act to take care of your body don't act immediately mm. and go to poison mm. chemo mm. immediately mm. take care of your body so i got diagnosed may 26 in june i right away order my herbs from that place in mexico mm. and then mm. other things that they recommended and i started mm. making juices and mm. smoothies and coffee mm. enemas in the summer So May mm. by June July I already was doing everything. Got it. Right Got away. It. That's. And in 5 right. months I stopped bleeding. Uh yeah so did did uh, did your doctors gave you a time limit about you know uh, your terminal cancer did they tell you that you have this much time or something of this sort? Yes. Maybe 5 yeah. months. May well, the gastroenterologist says you might make it 2 months you might be gone. Another one said 5 months. they say different thing no more than 6 months because it was everywhere but i don't i'm not a person that i have to find out for myself i'm not mm. oh really only god knows when we're gone mm. we well, you can leave it to a human to tell you mm. you're going to die in 4 months I, no it doesn't make sense to me it has to make sense right so right. exactly after 5 months the pain was gone the horrible pain is started going away mm-hmm. when i started the and protocol and the bleeding all right all right uh great i mean and did your doctors tell you that uh, in order to prolong your life we can do chemo or radiation something of this sort no doctor, so treatment was not an option the, that time the oncology from texas oncology in austin Uh, he said, "There's no studies. There's nothing." Mm. Uh, and then he fired me as a pa- he dropped me as a patient, but he couldn't tell me. I saw that he was acting nervous, so he told his nurse practitioner that he could no longer see me, mm. and he said he couldn't see me anymore. And that was that. That's that's really Awful. sad. I mean. I, I was yeah, crying. Exactly. I was so upset. Mm, mm. So, I mean, that's you know your your story is just fantastic about you know how you took control of your life. So, 
uh, how and what exactly was your day like when you started your you know healing journey so just can you just elaborate that you know you woke up at this time and you know by the end of this time i i slept and during this period i did all these things so what was it like and how intense oh. was it very intense <laughs> i don't even know how i did it today i look back and i'm like i really <laughs> wanted to live you know so i would wake up and have a juice and all yeah. my supplements always drink a lot of water alkaline water a lot of got it water um my supplements my juice and then i would wait a little bit and have a smoothie at first it was just cleansing with juices and smoothies but then after mm. a month or two months i don't remember i would have broth mm. vegetable broth and mm. soups um mm. so that was my food supplements all day long and by 2015 i bought a pmf machine so i would do it every mm. day for 20 minutes mm. i would do coffee and amas twice a day Mm. and colon hydrotherapy every week mm. and i saw this long pieces of toxins maybe all the meat that i ate up ate a lot of red meat all my life that was my favorite thing junk mm. uh, a lot of a lot of meat red meat and they started mm. coming out but i kept going and going for a long time doing enemas colonics for years So mm. basically the food the supplements PMF colonics coffee enemas and also uh, walking once mm. i got stronger exercise yeah. yeah yes and studying taking uh classes online to be a wellness coach to motivate me hobbies yeah. i painted you have to have a wow. hobby mm. um so i started painting and studying because mm. i i'm a person i can just sit I have to be my mind has to be stimulated. Right. So I right, was right, 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 right. So that was very basic that's mostly what mm, I did. Mm. And so, then later and on I also, learned about saunas. Tell me. Yeah, I I wanted to ask you about that only. I mean specifically did you also go for therapies uh this vitamin C therapies and you know different IV therapies. Yeah? I did. So I started right. that in September 2014 when I went to a clinic in Irvine, California, I did one. Mm. Then I come back to Austin and there was there, nobody did them. So I found a place an hour away mm. and I did the Myers cocktail vitamin C and glutathione which is a master antioxidant. Mm. Mm. Then slowly people that open clinics by 2017. Mm. with the bags and you know so i started doing that once a month it is like i said very expensive so so i was mm. had i had to work help others help myself to make it mm. to create this mm. healing right so yes i started doing myers cocktail with vitamin uh, c all the b's magnesium and glutathione first right. every two weeks and once a month i still do them Till right. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, great, and s- including saunas and PMF. PMF, you must have did everything every day. Saunas uh, and oxygen therapy. Did you also go for it? Uh, with the hot cap, if I'm saying it right, that machine. I started that later yeah. on. It has oxygen, mm. but I think that going outside and walking, mm. there's your oxygen. Where there's mm. trees, we we mm. live inside like in boxes. Mm. we need nature i will go to the beach a lot a lot do earthing at the beach and lay mm. on the sand with the water hit me i would lay down for a long hours mm. that's another natural therapy i did so so it's basically you connected completely with the roots right so mm-hmm. it, it's it's you know you know it's a good way to say that uh, from from raw diet so yeah talking about diet diet was your diet cooked or was your diet raw uh, how was it and did you also do juicing and how frequently and how much juicing did you do so i did about 8 16 ounces of juices let's say 2 liters 
in and then day? one smoothie yes and then oh. at first it was just juicy and smoothies with all the superfoods and everything mm. but everybody is different i want people to understand this you cannot treat mm. this this person that's why when i give uh, consultations i want to get mm. to know the person everything about mm. them because think that i was dealing with a full hysterectomy not having mm. my reproductive organs going immediately into menopause mm. and healing cancer and also a little bit of depression right so i had to have protein so i realized later on that i had to eat a little bit of protein like um avocados eggs mm. Mm. um sardines take omega so i went from vegan vegetarian and now no labels i don't like a label i don't want to say i'm vegan and vegetarian i eat for to be healthy mm. 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 all right and your juices contain what red and green juices if i'm not wrong a mixture of both yes so a little bit of everything one is celery cucumber pineapple and ginger my favorite I I drink one I have my ready for tonight I drink one at night too more wow. I now I drink like about 3 or 4 juice as 16 ounce juice mm. and then beets carrots and lemon and ginger mm. or beet and carrot and a little bit of lemon just the basic sometimes in my smoothie a lot of kale a lot of spinach a lot of many superfood ah. moringa moringa the tree of life moringa. that was one of the yeah. first so I have my brand now of my own moringa capsules. Okay. I take moringa every single day in capsules. Cuz oh. it's easier, the flavor is too strong. How widely is it available over there? I mean, all these things, all these natural things because in India you will you'll just find it in every corner. Right? Moringa is available, I mean, at every shop if I'm not wrong. you know and how how you know was it tough to procure all these things over there because i i know that uh, you know all these things over there uh, are are a bit expensive also and you don't get that very easily a friend showed me a video about how moringa in asia helps people yeah. and from there we found that in mexico we found a guy yeah. that has a moringa farm that yeah. heal his son So we got it from there and then I got it from another lady from Asia that has a small moringa um, farm in Texas. And slowly it's just like when you're ready to heal things come to you. Right. When you're on the right, right path it, it they just come to you. It's very strange but you attract those things. So it wasn't so hard uh, at the beginning maybe a little bit, but not too hard. And now it's got everywhere. It. In the United States it's everywhere. Got it. Moringa. Great. Great. and i mean how tell me about the progress i mean how long did you follow all these things when you and when did you start seeing results so you mentioned that you started all this in may uh, that is may of 2015 in june 14. june 2014 in june. 14 mm-hmm. june, june 2014 right so from june uh you started all these uh, natural uh you started you made your own protocol which we'll discuss about that in in a detail also uh but you started your protocol in june then how long did you follow it before you started seeing results so i i started feeling less pain 3 hmm. 4 months less no more bleeding but okay. when i went in september 2014 to the clinic and i started doing hmm. pmf pmf gives you the push to heal hmm. it's a very very unique therapy that you have to yeah. study and learn about because it's almost like the future of healing mm. and people see it always oh, you know electromagnetic uh, magnetic exactly. therapy but yeah. it is strong and that's what I myself have that hmm? I I myself have that with uh, sota uh, sota brand yeah So PMF just uh, just explain a bit what exactly is PMF and uh, how does it work It's called pulse magnetic therapy mm. It is what it is magnetic therapy and you plug it in and I have here the attachment mm. I'm going to show you mm. 
So it comes with an attachment like this, with different attachments. Right. You turn it on. Hmm. I don't know if you can hear it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a the small beep, right? So it pulses and hmm. you apply it anywhere. Okay. There's many ways of applying it. So yeah. it repairs damaged tissue. Hmm. It increases your oxygen levels. It decreases hmm. inflammation. It helps with serotonin, dopamine. It's approved by the mm. FDA for depression, mm. anxiety, and brain tumors. Mm. But immediately you start feeling relaxed. And let's say your stomach is uh, swollen or bloated or in pain. Mm. The inflammation goes down with the first therapy. I used to do it three times a week. Three times okay. a week. Go so I would drive. I didn't have a machine. And and then I bought my machine, but I started, I learned about it in September and then I started mm. in November or December 2014 mm. doing PMF. Mm. 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 Great. So, uh, so for, for three months, you three, three, four months, you, you stuck to your, I mean, you were sticking to your diet and natural therapies, exercise, yoga. Uh, yoga, I mean, did you, did you knew about yoga? Just I mentioned. Yes. So a lot of stretching yoga moves. I didn't go to a class. I mostly walked, did a little bit of weights and did a lot of okay. stretching. Okay. 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 So after that, you also included PMF, right? If I'm not wrong. So, uh, when did your tumor started shrinking and just tell me about it and how did it work? I mean, you, you mentioned that inflammation was less and all bleeding was less. So how, how, when, when did you next got your, uh, got yourself checked up and you saw that, you know, your uh, tumors were shrinking after this. So the, the, what, the, what I sent you 2014, 2015, mm. not even a year, almost mm. with a colonoscopy, my CA 125, um, ultrasounds the two well yeah the tumor and the colon are shrinking almost like pieces coming out and i will see them and okay. then my uh, liver less than a year the tumor started shrinking hmm. by 2017 yeah because it took three years around gone and then a tiny little piece of the big tumor that was almost, almost hmm. seven centimeters in my liver and yeah. I'm going to tell you this, cancer, you got to be careful because it can, it can come back if you continue exactly. doing the toxic lifestyle. So the liver, there's mm. always activity, mm. but I learned not to have fear. That's mm. what really healed me. I was, uh, I had so much fear from 2010 to 2000, maybe 16, yeah. 17, 17. And then by 2019, I said, Maybe all the meditation, I met with a lot of healers. I met with so many people that are very spiritual that mm -hmm. helped me and now uh, no fear. And if anything happened, okay, well, we got to keep on going. You know, we will, right. I'll do something about it, but I take really good care of my body. Mm, that's, that's nice. I mean, I can see it in your photos as well that the, the comparison that you said, uh, mm -hmm. That was perfect, and I mean the audience can also see it right now. So uh, perfect. I mean uh, that is that is fantastic. So uh, one of the most you know frequently asked question you know that I you know that I get every day is how do you make your own protocol? Because you know immediately when whenever someone is diagnosed. Then the first question is that, okay, I will choose to go towards the natural healing. Then now what? How should I go ahead? How should I talk? How, sh how should I make my own protocol? What should I include? How intense should it be? So what is your first recommendation for that? Always find a good wellness coach that had mm. cancer. That's mm. why I became a wellness coach to give you, mm. to help you, to help. Yeah. And then integrative an integrative doctor, maybe, mm. and check with ultrasounds, keep checking, have faith mm. also, believe in something, a higher power, mm. 
would help you in prayer. But um, you have to first find, to me, somebody to help you take care of your body. Mm. Always find a good coach before you jump into the treatment. So if your body's sick, right? Mm. And then you jump into the very aggressive treatment, I don't think there's gonna be a good result. And mm. unfortunately, I see it every single week. I give consultations on the phones, of camera mm. and in person. And in mm. person, I see the most awful things, but I become very strong. I said, if I live, I'm gonna be a wellness coach. And every at the beginning, I would cry and cry, and cry after every consultation. Now I'm learning to help without breaking. So mm. find a good a good wellness coach, somebody with experience, somebody had cancer, to guide you with diet with therapies. Because if you go to a clinic, let's say you go to an alternative medicine clinic, which I wanted to go mm. and I didn't. They're gonna charge you fifty thousand dollars. And what are you going to do when you get home? Mm, mm, mm. So you need some guidance. Right, right. Uh, great. I mean, uh, so, and what, what was your, what is your monitoring right now? I mean, what is your diet after falling, you know, after getting completely cured from your cancer naturally? How did you follow that? What, what is your diet so, today? Yeah, so I don't think it, I don't ever want to say completely cure. I said remission, right? When you're remission, everything's almost gone or everything's gone. Yeah. There's always some activity to me in the liver, but right. remission, right. right? So I don't overeat ever. I fast. Yeah. So I eat at the latest six or seven at night. Mm. And then I wake up and I always have some water and a hot drink. It can be. Mm green tea, turmeric, and, and, and you know, the golden, I don't remember what the name is, but there's a hot tea with turmeric and coconut oil. So something mm. hot in the morning. Mm. And then I wait and I'll have different things, you know, the pro, something with protein. Mm -hmm. And then I eat like a three or four. So I don't eat big meals. For example, today I had a lot of vegetables of tofu and a brown sauce. Mm. I try to stay away from a lot of grains, bread, rice, you know, but I also enjoy going out with a friend and having some sushi away from the raw, but I, I do love it, but I wait and then a glass of wine and talking yeah. to my friend and having a, a good conversation and a happy moment right there. Mm. So I'm not as strict as I was, but I am very aware of what I'm putting right. in my body. A lot of juicing too. Mm. Mm. Awareness is essential, to be very honest. Uh, specifically, when when you you know when you want to maintain a lifestyle that you want to you know you want a healthy lifestyle, then it then you need to be very much aware that what you're putting is is getting back one or the other way, either in the form of energy or in the form of lethargy, right? So yes. that is very true. That is very true. Uh, you know, uh, just as you mentioned about your diet, so this one, one question that uh, popped up right now, okay, what, what do you think uh, caused you this cancer? I mean, what do you think all of these things that started happening in your life, why did it happen? Uh, what was the primary reason or what, was, what were the initial reasons that you feel uh, were the you know contributing causes for this and you know we all know that it's just not one it's 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 a it's a multitude of factors it's it's like a multiple things going together in your body that that causes it so uh, what do you think caused it and you know I've I shared a checklist with you just just can you just go through it once and I'll just uh, ask you about it that uh, what sort of diet were you eating all these years before getting diagnosed so all my life, I ate anything I wanted, processed food, a lot of burgers, a lot of red meat. I ate a lot, um, but I was in a very stressful marriage, very mm -hmm. with financial issues, two little babies, mm -hmm. um, not happy, but I had to stay there. Mm -hmm. I had to, you know, because I you get married to stay married. But yeah. also this is what my body was very acidic. 
because mm. I drank uh, wine or alcohol maybe three, four times a week. I ate very healthy. I smoked. But I'm going to share this because it's very important. Uh, mm. I never used tampons and I used a tampon once and I forgot I had it there. Mm. And it stayed in my body. And then I haven't, so I was having a pain and I'm like, ah. so when I removed it, it was like, mm. that was like an infection and I didn't go to the doctor. And so that I think was what started it, that, uh, that fungus, mm. it created a fungus. Okay. That's what it created. Okay. And I didn't take antibiotics, but everything in 2006 to 2010 was Awful. Awful. I had to drive really far for work. Sometimes mm. I didn't have anybody to help me with my baby, my daughters. Um, mm. I was unhappy. I was always trying to stay positive, but inside I was worried about things. Mm. Uh, I ate very unhealthy, like I said. Everything was wrong, but I think that fungus really mm. had a lot to do with it. And stress, oh, God, stress, yeah. stress, stress, stress. So it was more of your mental health that you know you mentioned uh, that was was one of the main thing and you know the uh, the fungus. Uh, what uh, did you also were, were you exposed to any you know uh, dental fillings or dental health? How was it and uh, did you have a contributing factor to it? What do you think about it? So I have a lot of uh, fillings, a hmm? lot of them. Yes, and then they remove one. Yeah, they remove one, and I think that was toxic. With everything that, it else, was, it that was, was before two thousand ten. Hmm? Ah, all right, all right. It yeah, was in was before two thousand ten. Ah, got it, got it. It was after two thousand ten. Yeah. So, do you think that was one of the contributing factors? Because there's a lot of research saying that you know dental health is very important for your for your physical health and can contribute to diseases. I mean, the research is not conclusive, but yeah, it is. There is. That could be one of the small things, but now mm. with the experience mm. and I'm learning every day, because back then I didn't see clients, patients every day, you know? Uh, now uh, I can tell you from experience mm. that if your immune system is weakened, weak mm. by mm. doing everything wrong, chronic stress mm. for years, that can cause because you see a lot of people that do drugs drink eat unhealthy yeah. but they're happy they have financial uh, stability they're mm. happy they're, and they don't get cancer mm. you know yeah. and you're like why does that person they can be overweight they drink every day they smoke and they don't get they don't get sick they might have other things so it is the perfect storm all the bad things together mm. that cause cancer not one thing also mm. um when i was married my ex-husband always wanted to remodel the house on our own so asbestos mm. removing the floors with a machine and that all those toxins without a mask just a mm. bandana painting the house a lot of mm. toxins so everything was done wrong so many things. I can think of everything that I was doing wrong. And speaking of house, EMFs, were you also, do you, do you think it was a contributing factor? Or were you exposed to it? To, to what? Excuse me. EMFs, 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 electromagnetic frequencies. Uh, uh, no? Well, like everybody, no, not really. No. Not really? Great. Not, I don't see, I so, remember not, the tower being. Yeah, I mean, so I am just asking you because, you know, small, these are just small things that you unintentionally, you know, you don't know that you are being exposed and uh, eventually when you try to figure out the reasons and you look back, then you realize that, oh, okay, this, this might be one, this might be two, this might be three. All these things combined that, you know, you feel that, oh my God, this is what is really uh, you know making me sick so I mean yeah see I don't remember that I really don't but I can remember so many things like 
also doing a lot of painting and toxins inside the house, remodeling without the proper mask, without the, mm. I remember everything was doing done wrong between 2000, after I had my second daughter, 2006, mm. seven to 2010. Uh, every day doing the wrong thing, every day. <laughs> Got it. It. It's, you need to Got put it. more good than bad in your body. Yeah. And I was doing all bad, 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 and nothing good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not eating vegetables. Yeah. So. No, I mean, that's a fantastic thing and uh, fantastic story. I mean, you know, people who must, who, who are hearing it must be, you know, really inspired by you. And uh, what advice would you like to give someone who is, you know, who is just hearing this and want to learn something from you about it? My advice is one, when you get diagnosed, don't let the fear take over. I know that's the first mm. thing that happens mm. and start healing your body. If you smoke, stop smoking. If you eat unhealthy, uh, stop mm. eating unhealthy. If you're in an unhappy marriage, leave, get a divorce. Mm. If anything, look back 10 years what have i done what am i doing wrong and evaluate your life and start fixing it to become a better person and get three opinions if you want to see the oncologist get three different opinions no matter where you go in the world the united states is going to be the same medicines a lot of people say i have the best oncologist but the medicine is the same the same brand. Mm. So make sure you heal your body if you're going to jump into that that conventional treatment. Mm. And heal your mind. Resentment, sadness, loneliness make you sick. Mm. They do. Mm. Mm. And if anyone wants to get in touch with you, how can they do so? They can go to healingwithpilar.com or any uh, social media at Healing with Pilar. I'm mostly yeah. Instagram and Facebook, but healingwithpilar.com, click and I get a message and I'll contact you. Great, great, perfect, perfect. So you also provide consultations if anyone who is watching this video wants to get connected with Ms. Pilar, they can do so on her website and you know they can directly get a chance to talk to her and try to get a consultation and understand what changed her life and what and how her experience can help you in changing yours. So that would be just fantastic for anyone. Thank you. And I'm always learning. I'm always learning, getting better and better. We learn every mm. single day. And I learned this is yeah. my passion. What mm. I do be a, being a wellness coach is not just something lively. This is my life and my passion. And I know I can help. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much for doing this. I mean, your story is fantastic. And I think, uh, I think all of these things, you know, will make a difference in someone who is listening to this, you know, in one way or the other, because your journey from stage three ovarian to a stage four cancer, and then you eliminate it because there, there's a lot of information on natural health, but they don't know how to use it. They don't know how to, you know, take over that fear that you immediately get when you uh, when you just get diagnosed you know uh, how to move about the natural things and is is nat does natural even work that is that is the another question that you know that is most often uh, most frequently asked so all these it's, things it's, everybody's different so yeah. to me people say natural to me is taking care of your body you know mm. and it takes time to get it to a better state. Mm. And uh, what do you think about how long should one, you know, that is another question that I keep getting, that how long should one uh, follow this type of diet before start seeing results? What do you think? I think it's a lifestyle thing. So it's part of a lifestyle, lifestyle. and you have to go ahead. Yeah? Lifestyle. For, mm. Change your life forever if you want to get healthy anybody anybody mm. that wants to get healthy but you can also have fun you mm. can eat things you want once in a while you can be unhappy mm. eating yeah. carrots every day no you got but if you elimination is important so you got to sweat 
you gotta cry, you gotta, you know, go to the bathroom, you gotta make sure you're always eliminating. And also if you're upset, talk about it, but elimination, very, very important mm. for the rest of your life. Some people don't exercise, they don't sweat, mm. they don't cry, they hold their feelings. So that's another story I have so much to share, but yes, yeah. it's a lifestyle thing. Perfect, perfect. I mean, thanks a lot. Uh, it was fantastic. This interview was great. And uh, I would definitely stay in touch with you. And probably if anyone wants to get in touch with you, they can do so uh, with you on their on your website. And Thank you, Shavam, so much, so much. I appreciate this. This is wonderful. Ashay, do you have any important knowledge from this video? अगर आपको ये वीडियो अच्छा लगा तो इस वीडियो को लाइक करें और नीचे कमेंट करके अपनी राय जरूर दें याद रखें कि आपका एक शेयर किसी जरूरतमंद के बहुत काम आ सकता है इसीलिए वीडियो को ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा लोगों तक शेयर जरूर करें मिलते हैं जल्दी अगले वीडियो में तब तक के लिए कीप सपोर्टिंग से एम